And you're taking a look at the current satellite imagery of Hurricane Ian. Now a hurricane as of this morning going to bed last night. This was only a tropical storm. We saw that intensification throughout the overnight hours. Now we have sustained winds of 75 miles per hour at the core of this storm, putting it as a category one. It's getting closer and closer to the western part of the island of Cuba. Jamaica getting some of that outer band action as of this morning with that movement to the northwest at 14 miles per hour. We like to see that storm movement in the teens. That means that it is making its trek. It's doing what it's got to do and is getting out of there. We're expecting that storm movement to slow down as it enters the warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. That's bad news for coastal regions of Florida as that the slower that storm goes, that means more rainfall. That means more surge all the impacts will then be amplified. So we're tracking in this morning. We have a hurricane warning issued for the western coast of Cuba. As we look at uh, the Gulf Coast of Florida, places that are under a hurricane watch right now, Tampa Bay, Fort Myers under that tropical storm watch, Key West under that tropical storm warning. This storm is expected to strengthen even further, not only throughout the day today, but even going into the middle and end of this week. We're watching the chance for this storm intensification. So I'm not going to be surprised if those tropical storm watches and warnings get upgraded to hurricane watches and warnings as soon as later on today or tomorrow. So there is still some variability in the tracks here. We're seeing one of these commuter models indicated by these little squiggly lines here showing that Fort Myers could see a landfall as early as 8 p.m. on our Wednesday. Now other model runs are showing it making landfall on Thursday around the Big Bend region and others are pushing back landfall all the way to Friday. Now